NBC presents Bibber McGee and Molly. Starring Bob Sweeney as Fibber and Kathy Lewis as Molly. How's the fishing? <laughs> Haven't had a nibble. Why don't you see what you can catch with the lawnmower? You know, it, it seems kind of silly to, to cut the grass now when tomorrow we're leaving for two weeks. I can cut it when we get back. If we can find the house. Well, look at it this way. When we come home, I have to mow the lawn anyway. So why do the same job twice? Well, look at it this way. Why make the same job twice as hard? Well, look at it this way. You want me to put those in the car for you? You better come in the house, show me what you want, Pat. You better not pack anymore. The rest of the stuff is going to have to go in the back seat. Isn't there any more room in the trunk? It's pulling at the rivets now. One bump on the highway is going to look like an outdoor bargain basement. Well, this is the last of it for me. Holy smoke, all this? Where am I going to put my stuff? How much are you taking? Oh, two or three suits and a couple of sport oh, jackets. Oh, you won't need a suit, dear. It's very informal at the lake. Okay, then I'll take a couple of sport jackets. No, you won't need a jacket. It's so warm up there. Well, I'll take a sweater and... McGee, three you pairs. never, ever wear everything that you pack. Now, why don't we cut it to the bone? What's the least you can take? How about a necktie and a pair of swimming trunks? <laughs> you can't cut it any bonier than that. I don't know. We always, always seem to have this same problem. But why don't we just cancel the trip? Because we can't disappoint Cousin Florence and Oliver. After all, they're expecting us. Yeah, from the joy of leaving last year, you probably said something crazy like, be seeing you. How do you know it won't be so bad? They have a lovely house on the lake, and you do like to fish. Who gets to fish? All I do is sit in the boat all day and listen to Oliver talk about his money. I know. You know, it really burns me up the way that guy figures. Everything is for sale. See you again as planned on 15th. Have lots of news, Oliver. We'll have more words. Wouldn't you know? Couldn't take the 10 word rate. How to play the big shot. Help me shut this, will you? You know, Stanley didn't take this much to find Livingston. After we fill the car with all this stuff, we can ship it Railway Express and we can take the bus. Well, oh. <laughs> you know what we need? Maybe we ought to buy one of those luggage racks that goes on top of the car. No, we need something bigger. You remember that little two-wheeled trailer, that, uh, uh, that baggage trailer that Augie French got at the trailer show the other day? Oh, that was expensive. Seventy or eighty dollars. That'd be just the thing for us. We could use it on our fishing trips, too. Yeah, you know, it would come in handy. Come on, let's go. Boy, I hope they got a little left. Get the checkbook. Uh, wait, wait. I, I, I've got all this packing to do. I can't go yet. Well, I'll go myself then. Where's the checkbook? Uh, this packing won't take me long, honey. Why don't you wait? Huh? Well, uh, honey, look, I want to get to the trailer show before they're sold out. Where's the check? I'll get the packing done right this minute. We'll go together. Why won't you give me the checkbook? Oh, well, dear. I, how'll I put this delicately? Put what delicately? That I don't trust you. I'm only going out to buy a little trailer. We're only going to buy a little mandolin pick the day you came home with the hi-fi set. <laughs> that was a whole different situation. But the character is the same. Face it, McGee, you have no sales resistance. A smooth talker could sell you Grant's tomb. Now, just a minute. I got enough sense not to buy that again. <laughs> Funny McGee. I thought maybe it was a good place to relieve the tension. Yeah. Anybody home? That's Dr. Gamble. I asked him if we could borrow a couple of pieces of luggage. Okay, doctor, write down. Say, honey, is the checkbook still in the linen closet? Bottom drawer of the desk. Thanks. Is it really? <laughs> Not on your life. Hi, Molly. Oh, my, what beautiful luggage. Thank you. Oh, I see you got your initials on the inside, too. You must think a lot of yourself, Doc. Why shouldn't I have my initials on my luggage? You have YMCA on your towel. I have one towel. Somebody stole my clothes and I had to wear it home. Why don't you put the luggage in the closet? I'll pack it later, all okay, right? Okay, honey. Well, about finished with your packing, Molly? You know something, Doctor? We've been packing for three weeks for a two-week trip. Oh, okay. say, Doc, <laughs> we're going to buy one of those little two-wheel baggage trailers. Baggage trailer? Yeah, the kind uh, Augie French got at the trailer show. Come in kind of handy for us, won't it? Oh, no. That's not what you want, McGee. You don't want a baggage trailer. 
I don't? No, you want a bigger trailer. Oh, fine. One you can sleep in when you go on a trip. Oh, those are kind of expensive, aren't they? New ones, yeah, but good used ones don't cost much. Well, where could I get a used one? Well, by a splendid coincidence, I happen to have a trailer I might be willing to sell. How much? Let's see, it's four years old, cost $900 when it was new, depreciated at the rate of $50 a year, special discount for neighbors. I can put you in that trailer for $500. Gee, uh, four fifty. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, Doc. I knew it. But I'm not interested. All I want is a little two-wheeler, and nobody is going to sell me anything else. How's that for sales resistance? McGee, I am proud of you. Now do you think you can trust me at the trailer show? Well... You, you forced me to my bottom price, McGee, $400. Nope. Look at me. I am a man of stone. I'll get the checkbook. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to buy this trailer. Now, that's the biggest seller we have. It's small and it's light and easy to load. Uh, there's, uh, there's no need to go into the sales pitch. I, I've already made up my mind. I like a man who knows what he wants. <laughs> well, I know what I want. So if you'll j just get out the papers. Uh, uh, is that Gordon? Yes, that's right. It's Bill Gordon. And, and you're Mr... Uh, 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 McGee. Uh, I don't have a button, so you'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, why is it that you want this particular trailer, Mr. McGee? Well, uh, I like to go fishing oh, and... Oh, uh... fishing, there's a sport for a man. Cool mountain lakes, lofty pines, the smell of trout cooking in the kitchen of your little trailer. Uh, uh, this has a kitchen? Oh, of course you're right, this model hasn't got a kitchen. <laughs> I, I, I thought it looked a little small. Yes, but I'm glad you stopped, because if you want a trailer with a kitchen, it's my job to see that you get one. Well, uh, we I... want satisfied customers. We've got a slogan here. A customer who is not satisfied is not a satisfied customer. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that makes a great deal of sense. Uh, but you see, what I want... Yes, is, what you want is the sportsman special. Well, it's the best buy on the market today. <laughs> of course, I don't have to sell you because you know what you want. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I I, I... I know what I... Who's that kitchen? Indeed it has, Mr. McGee. A space-saving built-in kitchen with bachelor quarters. You're not married, are you? Uh-huh. Oh, how embarrassing. Here I am showing a bachelor trailer to a married man. The boys in the office will have a good laugh at Bill Gordon. <laughs> oh, well, you can count on me not to say anything about it. <laughs> I'm sorry to waste your time, but now I know exactly what you want. Oh, well, I know what I want, too. Uh, I said it first, Mr. McGee. May I show you the trailer that you want? May I show you the trailer that you came in to buy? May I do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah I'd kind of like to see what I had in mind. How do you like the new trailer I just bought? Golly, maybe I'll find buried treasure in our yard, too. I didn't find any buried treasure. You struck oil? No. You robbed a bank. Of course not. Uh, Teeny, uh, this, uh, this trailer looks a, a lot more expensive than it really is. You'd be surprised how cheap it was. How cheap was it? Only $9,500. Sounds like a lot of money to me. $9,500. Uh, well, uh, you see, $9,500 is... $9,500? Why does that suddenly sound like so much money? Can I watch the fight, mister? Hmm? Can I? Uh, uh, what fight? One that starts when Mrs. McGee sees the trailer. Now, look, th there isn't going to be any fight. Mrs. McGee is going to be tickled pink. <laughs> this is a beautiful trailer. It sure is. I'll bet you'd like to have it. I sure would. Teeny, come here. Sit down here. 
Now look, suppose you were married and your husband drove this trailer home to you. What would you do? How much money have we got? Uh, look, look, you, you can't always look on the dark side of things. This is a wonderful trailer and, and, and he wants you to have it because he loves you. He wants you to have something really special. Now, so what would you say? Nothing, I just slug it. You would? Right in the Labanza. Well, well, Mrs. McGee isn't the type of person to, to slug anybody. I know, she'll just faint. And cry. And pull her hair. And faint again. It's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be awful. I don't think I want to watch this. Episode. I don't think I do either. Bye. You go to that trailer shop. Oh, 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 oh you, you, you don't think I bought this trailer? Don't tell me it just followed you home. You do think so. You, you, you think I? <laughs> Funny, McGee. Oh dear, Funny. <laughs> You, you think I... Uh... <laughs> Tell me the joke. I could use a laugh right now. Well, uh, you see that trailer out there? You can't see much else out there. Uh, I want it. You want it? Yeah. How? Um, it was a door prize. Door prize? Uh-huh. Uh, the... Uh... The, the, they, they gave it to me for being the 10,000th person to visit the trailer show. I can't believe it. Honest? I swear, may lightning strike me. You're just gonna love it. It's just beautiful. Bill Gordon, Mr. McGee, I called up to find out when I could drop over and get those loan papers finalized. Uh, what were the papers I already signed? Oh, that was the agreement. Now we have to get the loan firmed up. And I want to look over the house since you put it up as collateral. I put up my house as collateral? Well, the small print on the agreement was quite specific. It said in black and white, if there is no down payment, any property owned by purchaser will serve as security. It's all very clear, Mr. McGee. Now, what time would it be convenient for me to drop by? Uh, uh, how about 12 o'clock tonight behind my garage? <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's rather cute. Uh, I know you're anxious to get this settled, Mr. McGee. Suppose I drop by right away. I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, I... <laughs> I can't believe it. Hi, Doc. I was just showing Dr. Gamble our new trailer. Now you ought to buy yourselves a new car. I was thinking the same thing. A, a new car? Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a new car to go with a new trailer? Uh, uh, sure, sure, yeah. Uh, but, but you know, a thing like that could snowball on you. Uh, after you get your new car, then you'd be wanting a new garage. And, and, and then you'd be wanting a new house to go with the new garage. And, and then before you know it, one morning you'd be wanting a new husband to go with the new house. Oh, I'm not 
not leaving you yet, dear. Not while you're on a winning streak. <laughs> Mr. Lucky. Well, uh, you know, the, the old car doesn't look so bad when it's cleaned up. Uh, as a matter of fact, why don't you go downtown right now and get it washed? I, I've got an awful lot of things to do around here. Why don't you take the car and have it washed? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, well uh, I, see, I was thinking that w while you were downtown, uh, you could go, uh, get that new dress that you've had your eye on over at Polly's. The expensive? What's money? I say, live today, for tomorrow we may die. <laughs> or maybe even this afternoon. You think it's all right. Goodbye, doctor. I'll see you later. There goes a good kid. You know, a man couldn't ask for a more understanding, warm-hearted... <laughs> Something wrong, Doc? Where did you get this trailer? And I want the truth. Well... You're lying. Well, give me a chance to. I'm waiting. Uh, I bought it. Bought it? This is worse than I thought. What did you think? Well, I thought you'd stolen it. You know, I, I didn't really mean to buy it. But all I wanted was a little two-wheel baggage trailer. And what happened to the man of stone? I met a man with a chisel. <laughs> Bye-bye, uh, uh, honey. How am I going to explain it to her? Your only chance is to plead insanity. I suppose I'll have to. There's a fellow's coming over with the loan papers for me to sign. Loan papers? Yeah, I put the house up as security. <laughs> oh, well, then there's no problem. What do you mean? If you don't sign for the loan, they'll have to take back the trailer. Hey, that's right. I never thought of that. Naturally. Doc? It pulled me out of a real hole. Don't bother to thank me, McGee. I took an oath to tend the sick. And I have never known anyone sicker. Hello again, Mr. McGee. Don't bother to zip that zipper, Junior, because the deal is off. What's that? Yes, sir, I'm not signing any papers. So just haul that mobile monstrosity right back to where it came from. Oh, I see. I... I certainly want to thank you, Mr. McGee. What for? I just won some money on you. How? I bet the boss $20 you'd welch on the deal. Welch? I had you pegged as a deadbeat right away. Deadbeat? And who wears cheap shoes, doesn't buy expensive trailers. Cheap shoes? <laughs> I, I don't think this house would be acceptable collateral anyway. Now, wait a minute. Sort of on the wrong side of the tracks, you know. Listen, this house is worth twice what that trailer is worth. You're probably a bad credit risk anyway. My credit is good any place in town. The same old story. The smaller the man, the bigger the mouth. Big mouth, huh? Well, sure, huh? You got that contract? Right here. You got a pen? Right here. Yeah. That big mouth of yours just cost you 20 bucks. You know, I was altogether wrong about you. You're, You're just darn right you were. Here's your copy of the contract. Yeah. Next time you want to lose a customer, you better watch how you talk to him. Oh, I certainly will. Good day. <laughs> Say, was that the trailer salesman? Yeah. Say, I was going to give you two more minutes with him, then I was coming in with a gun. Don't worry, I fixed him good. Oh, it must have killed him to lose that sale. Who called me a welcher? He must have been boiling. A deadbeat. Oh, it's tough to lose a pigeon. You should have thrown those papers right in his face. Yeah, with well, the ink still <laughs> wet. I wish I'd been... <laughs> what ink? The ink on the... I think I made another one of those little foolish mistakes. You didn't sign any papers Dad, by... I've got a surprise for you boys. Surprise? Yes. Well, you know, I got to talking with this man down at the car wash, and I told him about the trailer that we won, and he had a simply marvelous idea. Uh-huh. Uh, as he said, we don't really need a trailer that big, you know? We, we, we could do with a much smaller one. Uh-huh. Well, he figured it out. Now, since our trailer is worth $9,500, we could sell it and we could buy a very nice trailer for about $5,000. Uh-huh. And that would give us $4,500. Uh -huh. So, I took his advice and we still have $1,000 to put in the bank. Uh-huh. Oh, wait a minute. What happened to the other $3,500? I, I bought a new car with it. You bought a new car? 
stop. She just bought a new car. We have a new car and a new trailer. I only had to sign a, a little a paper here, we and, and I could car. drive it home, and it's just beautiful. Look, <laughs> McGee, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> McGee, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that beautiful? Do you like it? <laughs> McGee? What's the matter with you, Walter? Have you got any brandy? I think so. Good. Bring the bottle and two glasses. What do you mean, two glasses? You're gonna need one for yourself. <laughs> now, try to look at this as one of those moments that you and Molly will look back on and laugh about. You have to try hard, but try hard. No, no. I don't know why I didn't tell you the truth in the first place. Oh, stop blaming yourself, McGee. I would if I could think of anyone else to blame. Well, Mayor, the trivia's on his way over. Maybe he'll be able to help us. The only way he could help is to buy that car and trailer. Well, even Mayor, the trivia can't afford that. We're the last of the big spenders around here. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mayor. Won't you come in? Thank you, Molly. Hi, Latrev. I um, hope we didn't take you away from anything important, Mr. Mayor. Well, my time is rather limited. I've got to go over the plans for the new public library. Oh. Well, Latrev, here's the problem. You see, library? Yes, I rather favor the Gothic design myself. Uh, say, Latrev, when you drove up, did you happen to notice a trailer out in front? Oh, so that's what that is. I thought somebody was moving a house. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of big, but that's why it would make a great library. The trailer? Yeah, that's got plenty of room for books, comfortable furniture, two studio couches for people who like to read in bed. Now, really, McGee? When a book is overdue, you just drive the library over and pick it up. We make money on overdue books. Perfect! Perfect! You could hide the library for a couple of weeks and make a fortune. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd see the sense in that, Latrell. You're a man with new ideas, a man with dash and daring. You're the best mayor we've ever had. McGee, you're pulling a sandy on me. Me? Yes, you got stuck with the trailer, now you're trying to foist it off on the city. I am not trying to foist off anything. As a matter of fact, I want to donate that trailer. Donate it? That's right. All I ask in return is the 9500 I paid for it. <laughs> Thank you, but nevertheless, the city can't buy your trailer. Let's say the trip. Why don't we take a look at it, huh? Let go of my coat. Show some imagination, boy. I think a trailer would be a great idea. If I were in your spot, I'd think so, too. Unhand me, sir. What, what, what this town needs is, is new ideas, Latrev. If you expect to get ahead in politics, you better get a little more dash and daring. Marble bird baths will never put you in the White House. Nice try. Windbag. Have, have you ever seen anything bigger than Latrivia's mouth? Yes. Our trailer. <laughs> Cousin Florence and Oliver? Oh, my gosh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> what are they doing here? I don't know. This is terrible. Hello. <laughs> Where are we going to put them? In the trailer. <laughs> hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? No, well, yeah. we thought that we'd you and come a day early. Oh, well, this sure is a surprise. Oh, this is a big surprise. Yeah. Didn't you get our telegram? Yeah, 11 words. We'll see you on the 15th as planned. Have lots of news, Oliver. They sent them, all 11. Yes, but yeah. well, we thought that we... Uh, uh, come, come, on. come on in, come on in. <laughs> Let me take your hat. Oh, your house looks nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sit down there. Thank sit down. You, thank you. Thank you. Well, tell them the big news, honey. Well, Oliver sold his hardware store. At a profit. Yes. And we sold our house at the lake. Another at... profit. Well, anyway, we're just a couple of gypsies now. Rich gypsies. <laughs> we're going to spend all our time traveling. Oh, uh, by the way. Is that your trailer out there? Oh, yes. I sure do like it. You do, Oliver? Oh, yes. Now that we're retired, uh, Florence and I should have something like that. Oh, absolutely. All the gypsies are buying them. The rich gypsies. <laughs> Oliver, uh, would you be interested in buying a trailer? Well, we've been thinking about it. 
Uh, uh, you know, the, the car and the trailer are a set. Oh, naturally. Uh, would you consider selling them? Oh, oh I don't know, Oliver. Uh, oh, of course not. I shouldn't have even asked. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Molly and I, we don't do much traveling anymore. No. You know? no. Why don't we take a look at it? Oh, that's fine. Oh, Stop it. Yeah, I guess it's... Fire? Oh, honestly, you'll just love the car. I guess a big trailer like that would cost, uh, let's say, $10,000. Oh, let's say $11,000. Oh, let's say $9,500. <laughs> Tinny? What happened, mister? Hmm? What happened? What do you mean? Your trailer shrunk. No, we sold the big one. Looks like you got one of its puppies. <laughs> you going somewhere? We're going to the mountains. You sure you've got everything? Yeah, I think so. I, uh, forgot the fly rod. In the hall closet. You know something? I think I forget my head. I got my hat, too. Hall closet. Be right back. You're quite fond on him, aren't you? That I am. He's a very unusual man. Oh, that he is. Your life must be terribly exciting. You might say, I married adventure. When we get back, I gotta clean out that closet. The Salesman was played by Charles Lane, Florence by Gladys Hurlbut, Oliver by Harry Cheshire.